Wills, a kindergarten teacher and blogger at MrsWillsKindergarten.com. Welcome, Dee Dee. Hi. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about your background as a teacher? Sure. Um, I uh, became a teacher about uh, 12, 13 years ago. I started out in second grade, and then I was our district's literacy coach for two years and uh, really missed having my own classroom. So when the classroom became open, I begged, and I ended up in kindergarten. So I've been in kindergarten for about six, seven years now. So I love it. Kindergarten's the best place ever. Excellent, excellent. And tell us a little bit more about your blog. Okay. Um, well, about four or five years ago, um, I started to notice that blogs were coming out, and I really enjoyed being able to hear what and see what's happening in other classrooms. So I knew that I had something that I wanted to share as well. So I just started blogging, and people started reading, and it's been wonderful. Oh, excellent. So what would be the one piece of advice you would give to a kindergarten teacher who's just starting out? Um, I think probably the best advice I would give is to try not to do it all. It's very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I think the most important part is to have your classroom management and your control. Mm -hmm. Really focus on that mm -hmm. during the first part of your um, career. Make sure that you um, have control of your class. Mm -hmm. um, and then pick one area of discipline and try to master that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for example, maybe for the first two, you really want to work on guided reading. Mm -hmm. um, really master that, um, mm -hmm. and when you feel comfortable with that, then add another element. Okay. But to try to be a master of all things yeah. will make you feel overwhelmed yeah. and perhaps maybe a little defeated. Uh -huh. Where getting through that first couple of years is six tough. Mm -hmm. So just focusing on it. Yeah. Exactly. Do oh. one thing, get it down before you start to worry about doing it all. You don't oh. have to do it all. Good. Just okay. do what you can. That sounds good. Okay. <laughs> What about um, for parents? So a lot of times with kindergarten, it's the parents' first time really being yes. in the school system. Yes. And they don't necessarily know how, what is expected of them. Right. What, what advice do you have for parents on how to be the best parents they can to a kindergartner? Um, well, I think you, you want to make sure that your teacher has an open communication mm -hmm. um, and be present for them. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you, um, most, most teachers have a, a prep time that they use, and so be aware of when that is, so that if you have a question, you can reach them. Mm -hmm. um, I myself, I give out my cell phone number to all of my parents, and I would much rather have them call me mm -hmm. if there's a question or concern, mm -hmm. than have them be frantic about it. Mm -hmm. um, and so you would want to make sure that you have really good communication with the teacher, mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think sometimes the things that come out of children's mouths mm -hmm. are kind of funny. Um, and sometimes I hear really strange stories about things that are going on at home. And I'm sure that they hear strange stories about things that are going on at school. So um, I take those strange things with a grain of salt. So yeah. remember to do the same in return and call if there's any questions or concerns. Okay. That would be my advice. Cool. Be a partner. Be a partner with your, you know, your child's teacher. What, what's the right amount that the parents should feel able to talk to the teacher? I mean, I have a kindergarten son myself, and I feel like anytime I'm emailing the, the teacher, I'm bothering him. And I don't think he's ever made, made me feel that way, right. but I just feel like that. Well, what advice do you have for parents about what's acceptable? Well, I, I sort of feel like our children, um, our kindergarten um, age children, mm -hmm. Yeah, my son's in college, so I don't think it ever ends, but they're the most important thing mm -hmm. for you. So how much is too much? I don't think there's ever too much. Okay. I mean, I think if, if a parent has a concern or a worry, um, I think that they should contact me. And I had a parent, love her, but you know, this was her first child that had ever left this, her home, uh -huh. so she was really good at and she emailed me seriously three times a week uh -huh. uh, with, you know, I'm just kind of worried about this, or could you watch her because she had this, and she um, later came to me when she was in first grade. Um, um, my old sweetie was in first grade. I said, you know, you just made me feel mm -hmm. like no matter what, it was okay for me. I would rather, you know, it's the most precious possession. They need to be able to to know that you feel the same way. You know? Cool. Yeah. So I don't think there's too many times. As long as you understand that maybe you might not get a response. Uh -huh. That same hour that you send an email, because you know we're working with kids, so wait till the evening or something. Yeah, but, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, cool. Well, Dee Dee, thank you so much. Thanks. It's been wonderful. It was nice to meet you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.